What is that you're eating? Oh, it's a chocolate bar with its sweet, savory goodness. Is it necessary to consume for the survival of your species? Um, no. Does it raise IQ levels? No. Does it help you lose weight? Is it healthy for you? No, the complete opposite in that fact. So what you're saying is you're eating a chocolate bar, which is unhealthy for you and makes you gain weight. Yeah. Why? It's my cheat day. Chocolate tastes good. It's also poisonous for some animals like dogs. Why does it exist? Why don't you just try some? In the name of science. Arr! So? Human, I will need all the chocolate you have in your possession. From the scientific research, of course. Human, this is a stasis pod. It has some similarities to your beds back on Earth. Oh, cool! How much time do you spend in there? Eight hours? Well, by your human system of time measurement, it would be approximately five months minimum. But what? I know sleeping is great and all, but five months? That's an insane amount of time to be stuck in one position. And sometimes when we get out of it, our skin pigment changes. Then we must go through a process of treatment. But why do you even do that? You don't seem to ever get tired. We just do it because... Because we, because we just like it. I'm going back to Earth. So you humans named your entire galaxy after the secretions of another. Yep. Yeah. What is this thing I have found called porn? Uh, oh, um, that's what humans watch when they, um, yeah. Also when they're bored. So you're telling me humans find it normal to watch someone else's intercourse? Well, yeah, some people even make the videos just to show others. This species keeps disappointing me minute by minute. Human, why are they carrying flags? Are they for their country of origin? Hmm? Oh, no, not those flags. Those are pride flags. Pride flags? Proud of what? Well, it's sort of complicated, but the basic idea is that the flags these humans are carrying represent their gender or sexuality. That one's non-binary, that one's lesbian, that one's pan, that one's asexual. Oh, you have those too. Yeah. How do you treat them in your culture? No different than anyone else. They're free to love and be whoever they are as long as they're not hurting anyone. What's that flag you're carrying? Oh, this is an ally flag. This means I support these humans. That imply there are some that don't. Sadly, yes. Okay, how bad is it? Well, remember that racism and sexism thing I was telling you about last week? You're not telling me humans have been killed over this. You are one fucked up species. What are you listening to, human? Is it music? No, it's someone else reading a creepypasta. And that is... what is it? It's a scary story from the internet. So people even listen to him while they sleep. What is wrong with you? Excuse me, human, what is this creature? Oh, hey, that's my dog. Pretty adorable, isn't it? Could you define, please? Basically a domesticated wolf. A wolf? Yep. The dangerous wild creature. Yeah. How do you even get from a wolf to this? <clears throat> In reading? I am disgusted. What are you doing, human? I'm drawing the view outside. Do all humans do this when they are bored? Not all humans do this. Some sing songs, others write stories. Sometimes we do this for a job. Uh, oh. And it does not have to do with anything painful. Why would it have to do with anything painful? Because almost everything you humans have taught me is that you can do testable things for entertainment. What are you watching? It's this guy named Seymour who does impressions of people. He's doing an alien and a human. I is that a conversation on there? Uh, oh my god, it is. And now this conversation is on there! Wait, why is it cut off the- Humans mentioned someone taking off in space not too long ago. Computer, find any evidence of human life forms outside the solar system. Searching. One audio file found. Start recording. Human. What's a human? Not what? Who? He's the most feared bounty hunter in the system. What makes him so special? Cybernetics? Psionics? Whatever it is, we've beaten it before. That's just it. There is no trick. Nothing. Plain vanilla biology and no weapons beyond chemically propelled kinetics and edge tools. You're kidding, right? Then why is he such a big deal? He's a big deal because he does the job without anything like that. He can track you down and kill you without any net dives or mind scans. And there's nothing we've got that can shut him down. He 
He's not cybernetic, so he can't EM him. He's got no psychic presence, so he can't cybomb him. There's almost no way to track him down or get away once he finds you. Can't we just kill him? Good luck. First, you've got to find him. And they say he can disguise himself as anything. Like what? Posing as that vending machine? No. What the? I'm posing as the drinking fountain. And recording. Absolute barbarians. This incredible short story was written by Impala Lord. Check him out on Tumblr. They do some amazing stuff with the space orcs genre. You humans are strange, you know that? You have all of this technology, but you're so primitive. You can travel worlds, turn a dead husk into a vibrant oasis, and you still use the tools you used when given at birth. Not to mention your short lives. But I think that's why you've lasted so long in this cutthroat universe. You live for the moment. The biggest example of this is adrenaline. Your body's manufacture and release a deadly toxin. And it makes you fearless. Think. This causes some horrible problems. It can kill you. But you make it and release it to ignore pain and fear, so in one moment, you are not primal creatures. You are gods immune to pain and fear. Remember 5th Battalion at Crazy? They were beaten down and trenched against huge odds, so what did you do? Surrender? <laughs> no. You attached your knives to your rifles and charged at the masses and slaughtered them. Perhaps that's what makes you so interesting. Most species only think about the future, but you think of the now. You are the children of the moment. No matter what happens, you can make actions of unimaginable bravery. Forget all fear because of your primal connections to adrenaline. We Axel could do with some ourselves. <laughs> Today's very dark but very powerful short story is brought to you by The Fallen Oracle. Humans, weak, gangly, impulsive, you are pathetic. Yet, somehow you still manage to elude my forces. You sit there, twiddling your thumbs. And somehow I cannot contain you. No amount of bounties put on your head slows you down. One day you're over on the moon of Jod. Then the next you're on Jod. How do you do it? What is it that allows you to be one step ahead of us all the time? What is it? This human has been beaten. His body now broken beyond reason. His face is unrecognizable through the blood and swollen eyes. Missing teeth and a cut tongue plague his speech. His arms are so bent and warped in places too horrible to think about. His legs have already been torn from his body, the wounds staunched with sauntering irons. He speaks only a single sentence. I know you won't kill me. You dare think that? Is that a bet? God, kill his second offspring! No! <laughs> Don't do that! Uh I'll tell you what I know. Hold that thought. All right. Spare you little hot knack. It's called intuition. It comes with a brain. You could use one. The alien creature roared, his rage beyond his control. The Igrilnik plunged his clawed hand into the bloody flesh of the human. Blood poured over his claw as the light faded from the eyes of this human. Sir, what? The humans escaped! One life part has been launched! No! Never underestimate the power of intuition. For a human will sacrifice himself to save the others. 
Today's short story is brought to you again by the Impala Lord. Check him out on Tumblr. Ever since the first of us looked up through the waves, we wanted to go to space, to see the stars and touch them. It's a childish thing to want to go out among them, sailing the black waves. But everyone knows that it's impossible. Every species that has ever existed has come to the point where they realize that space travel is impossible. Existing in space is something that no species is capable of doing, and they give up. On Kellyan, to be a dreamer is pejoratively known as thinking of star stuff. Every species knows that space travel is impossible. Every species, except one. They gird themselves in steel and fibers made simply to keep them alive. They wrap themselves in waste recycling units and breathing apparatuses. They create machines so large they seem like mountains of iron sitting upon great treads. All to transport their secret to space travel. The thing they use to go out among the stars? A rocket. A great massive weapon aimed not at terrestrial enemies or used for bursting into colors so many like life day celebrations no they strap themselves into those nose cones of rockets take aim at the endless eternities and fire where other civilizations have stopped seeing madness and suicide they saw endless possibility we only saw the endless eternities And that was what it was to us. That is why we never became a spacefaring race. No one did. No one except these brave fools. Turning enemies into allies for the sole goal of spreading outwards and discovering. We would never have known we weren't alone in the universe had it not been for them. No other race would have come from the stars. The Gorlick, The Aldeni? The Squeb? No. No other race would have ever dreamed of something so stupid, so suicidal, so dangerous and destructive. Only the humans did. And to this day, we thank them. They have given the galaxy its greatest gift. The ability to gaze out into the eyes of what is possible and shout, Fuck you! Hassan von Rissig, Dreisel Spacemonaut Graduation, Universal Standard Date 02074131 Alpha. End of recording. Hmm. So these barbarians really do contribute more to the universe than I thought. Fascinating.